I accelerated my success as a realtor by tuning into podcasts, and now it's time for me to give back. Join me while I chat with some of the top agents in the industry, gaining insight into how they became experts at selling real estate so you can too. Who am I? Well, I'm Mark Rawmaker. I went from selling $5 million in real estate my first year as a part-time agent to running a mega icon team who has sold over $260 million in real estate in just five years. I'll be your host while we talk to yet another amazing realtor crushing the game. Welcome to the Real Estate Ninja Podcast. Welcome back to the Real Estate Ninja Podcast. I'm here to bring you interviews with some of the top agents in the country so that you can learn more about how they are dominating real estate. This is a good episode. I'm about to sit down with Gogo Bethke. She is an industry leader and massively successful. You'll find out her top 10 tips on recruiting and get a behind the scenes look into her journey of hiring staff and transitioning completely out of production. She also explains how she has grown her business from one agent to multiple agents across the country, to which strategies enable her remarkable success. This episode is jam-packed. Join us for an insightful chat with Gogo as we uncover the secrets of her success. Before we get started, real quick though, make sure you hit that subscribe button on your podcast so you don't miss an episode every Thursday because we have another amazing guest next week. Go ahead and give us also a five-star review so that more people like you can join in on this incredible podcast. Now... Let's chat with Gogo. All right. On today's episode, we have an incredible guest. She is known as the social media queen of real estate with more than 64,000 followers on Instagram. She is the founder of Hashtag Team Gogo, one of the fastest growing teams at eXp Realty with over 1,000 agents. She is among the top 3% of realtors in the nation and was voted top 125 most influential people by Success Magazine in 2022. Recently, she actually launched her own TV show, Gogopreneur, where she shares her journey from a girl from Transylvania. In your Romania with no college degree, no sphere of influence, no money, no experience, and an accent to a successful entrepreneur with eight companies and two time two comma club award winning online boot camps. Gogo is ready to inspire us and show you how to achieve success too. Welcome to our show, Gogo Bethke. How are you? Oh, thank you so much for having me. I am wonderful. Good, Besides good, good, man. Sorry. sorry and I got on the cruise for being on a cruise for eight days, but you know, we're yeah, you just on. went on vacation. Did, let me ask you this right away. Do you get to unplug on vacation or is it stressful? On this one, I was kind of forced to unplug for multiple reasons. A, uh, and there wasn't really no SaaS service, even though we got the highest Wi-Fi package. Most of the time there was no Wi-Fi. And uh, also most of the time I was sicker than a dog because I got seasick super bad. <laughs> so do I do. Really do you wear the patch? Of- the patch? So the patch almost killed me. So I wore the patch and I literally almost went blind from it. So I had to go to the doctor because I was losing my vision. And I walked into the boat, the ship doctor and she, I said, I'm losing my vision. I can't see. And she goes, where's your patch? She knew right away. She yanked it off of me. And she's like, do not ever use this. She goes, we don't recommend it. So anyway, I was sick of the dogs, but my photos look great while we were lay- on land. This is the power of social media, right? You would not know that I was dying. Oh, um, so it's just the my highlights. Land photos are, my <laughs> land photos are amazing. <laughs> yeah. I always photos. say... I say with social media, we should have one day of social media where it's like real day and it's just like not reels, but like just pictures of you like doing terrible things the day because it's so, you know what I mean? Not the highlights because I we always like the highlights. But I mean, if you go on my in my stories right now, you are going to see me with a filter on and you're going to see me here with no filter on. So it's a little bit different face. It's a little bit different. I love a filter. Yeah. Right. Let's dive into a little bit. Just if, if we if you're if you're a listener and you don't know who Gogo is, if you can do a quick cliff note version of of who you are and how you got into real estate um most people do know it so but i don't want to i don't want to just jump over it but if you can do a quick one um and then we'll get into some real actual knowledge and value sure so um originally from romania transylvania transylvania romania i moved here when i was 21 uh in 2003 i got licensed in real estate in 2011 in the state of michigan currently we live in florida because uh thanks to exp and some of the businesses that I was able to build in the past, and now we are enjoying financial freedom, location freedom, and time freedom. Time freedom portion of it is a little bit of a joke, but hey, I'm working on that still, right? Um, <laughs> and I uh, built the team a couple of times, it fell apart. I've never built a mega icon team like you. I just built cute little teams um, twice, and then the first two times it was uh, it didn't work out very well, right? I learned some lessons from it. The third time is the charm. So today I have a cute little team in Michigan that we call Gret or Gogo's Real Estate Team. 
they do all of my personally organically generated transactions. I never bought a lead in my career. I am a top 2% producer in the nation based on organically generated leads. So I'm huge on social media and um, sphere of influence and, and having your systems and processes in places where your customers are well taken care of and they're returning customers and they're referring, right? So they refer their, their cousins and their best friends to you. Um, and then I joined EXP in 2000. And so I was with Real Estate Fund for seven and a half years, Keller Williams for almost two years. And then I joined EXP back in 2018. Since EXP allows us to do business multiple different ways, I also built what we call the downline organization at EXP, which we call Team Gogo. Team Gogo today is over at 1,061 agents. I checked it this morning and growing. Awesome. Um, we grow about 60 agents now, um, cons like the last, uh, the last one, 64 agents. I think this month, I think we're at 59. Um, and I, I think that, oh, I've built a, you know, a TV show and a couple to come a couple award winning, um, online courses and some syndications and, you know, just grown up stuff in real estate. Grown up stuff. So let's, uh, let's, let's dive into some of that stuff. So your, your team. So I, I, I think team, team builders are going to be listening to this, especially with you on this, on this episode. So you have two separate things, the team go, go and your real estate team are two separate things, right? Which came first? Um, they kind of came at the same time, to be honest with you. So I'll, I'll walk you through it. While I was with Real Estate One for seven and a half years, Real Estate One is one of the largest family owned um, non franchise companies in the state of Michigan. I was with them pretty much in my grown up years of real estate, right? They were amazing to me. I had really no reason to leave besides the fact that my my social media grown nationally, which people would reach out to me all the time that they want to become licensed. And I really would spend the time with them on the phone and tell them to go get licensed because I want everybody to be a realtor if they want to write. I love this industry, but it took time away from production for talking with these agents. But then in return, I couldn't get paid for that time. Right. So I was like, I need to build a team because now while I'm on the phone with agents, somebody needs to be doing the transactions. So I started building a team. There was no structure at Real Estate One. I was kind of the first one who was trying to build a team. So they kind of were like, oh, I'll just run with it. There was no split. There was no reduced commit, reduced cuts. Um, you wrote so like it, it just wasn't working out. I, there, I had nobody to ask questions from. Like, how do you for like do you have a contract? What does the contract say? How do you take your splits? Like none of that, right? So I was kind of winging it myself. And then that team um, came with me over to Keller. It wasn't really working in the first place, but anyway, when I switched to Keller, they came with me. And then one day, they all walked out in the door at the same time. Color. Oh, so wow. Like, oh, okay. okay. So I don't have a team anymore, right? Awesome. And, uh, yeah. And then I decided to switch. So I was only at Keller for eight months. So in that period, I decided to switch to EXP. When I decided to switch to EXP, I was like, I have to figure this team thing out. So this time I did it right. And I interviewed while at EXP, there were teams. There were many kind of teams. There was the husband and wife teams, the standard teams, the self-organized teams, and the mega icon teams, right? Plus, when you are in a downline of seven other business partners now, they are your business partners now, they will open up their book of business and tell you how they did it. So it's not like me trying to figure it out in the dark, trying to build something myself without any systems in places or any guidance, right? So now I did it right. right. I went and interviewed all of the people that I look up to and uh, see how they did it. So even though my contract is technically built off of two mega icon teams contract and I added my social media requirements to it, I don't run or ever want to have a mega icon team, right? So I just want to have a cute little team that creates passive income that removes me 100% from um, transactions. So I haven't done a transaction in probably close to two years now. Um, and I'm proud of wow. it. Somebody asked me last year, what was my transaction goal? And I said it was zero and I hit my goal. So I was very happy. <laughs> it's so backwards from the rest of the industry, right? Like where all, all we would do is walk around, like talk about our volume and our units and all that stuff. And it's so yeah. cool. I, last year I sold l half, half of what I did the year before because of the team I'm built, I'm running this team and I did put more energy into that and it felt like such a failure. But it, I know it wasn't. It was actually a massive success. I mean, I have to wrap your people mind. Say, yeah, I have people saying they're like, well, go, go. It doesn't even do transactions anymore. And I'm thinking, that's the whole point. Right. That's the whole point. How awesome is that? Yeah. Like, but you are, but you're still involved in how many, like, if you put together all the transactions you've helped create, right? That's thousands and thousands and thousands of transactions. Oh, yes. Um, I mean, Team GoGo, we did uh, 1.2 billion last year. So in 2022, Team GoGo did 1.296, so almost 1.3 billion last year and then my local team in michigan we did 62 transactions uh five hundred thousand three thousand dollars short of five hundred thousand gci and you and you didn't sell any of them 
I mean, technically no. you weren't on any of the transactions. So then how do you decide when, when an agent raises their hand? Cause you, you probably get quite a bit from your social media. How do you decide if they're just going to be revenue share or if, or is your team like cut out? Like what if somebody wanted to join your team in Michigan? Is that not an option for them? Nope. Nope. Just team I have go, two go. agents and I'm very happy with two agents. That's really all I need. So team GoGo -Go is your, is, is the, the revenue share. Um, wh what does that look like when they join? I know you have a massive training cause you were on my feed all the time, like totally sp like sponsored ad after sponsor. ad. I think I liked one of your posts and I was like, get out of my face. I don't have my own training, but like, wh it looked awesome though. I was like, I kind of want to take it just to see what it is. Like what, t can we talk about that? Because I feel like it's a little bit of a secret of how do you get to build that? What's it look like? What is the team? What does your revenue share team get with that? Yeah. So, um, I built Goku's bootcamp social media prior to joining. Dexley. So when I got into real estate, right, I didn't necessarily have, <laughs> not necessarily. I had no sphere. I had no sphere. Nobody, yeah, nobody uh, knew you, right? I'm from Romania, guys. Like I still to the day, I don't have anybody that's related to me by blood on this whole continent besides my two children. Your kids, my right. Created, right? They don't count. They're teenagers. They're not buying houses anytime soon. Right? So I didn't have a sphere. I didn't have any money. I had no college education. I had no sales experience. I had no, I, on top of it, I had an accent. My real name is Jun Dvir. Good. Yeah, good luck trying to yeah, I, yeah. call that I, your Yeah, I, I won't do it. <laughs> so pretty much everything that could go against me went against me in real estate. And on top of it all, I'm the sort of loser you'll ever meet. I'm very super duper competitive. Like, I don't know why, but yeah. if I'm doing something, I have to win, period, right? So when I got into real estate, I realized 80% of the realtors give up in the first year. And the leftover realtors, another 80% will give up in the second year. So a very small amount of realtors actually stick it out in the industry for an extended period of time. So I realized I'm like, I don't want to be that 80%. Like I have to be in that 20% plus the top 20% is 80% of the business. So hey, there's another step for you. Correct. Right? So I need to be, I needed to be in that top 20% and then I needed to figure out what is it going to take. So I knew what I'm not willing to do. So when I got into, at least in my office, the average age when I got licensed, I was 29 years old. The average age of a realtor at the time was, I think, 64 years old or something like that. Something crazy, way into the 60s, right? I was like, whoa, right. like these agents have been in real estate longer than I've been alive. Like they right. have knowledge, they know stuff, right? And so I interviewed all of the top producers in the office, come to find out that they were doing things and I couldn't or I wasn't willing to. So for example, they were door knocking. I'm five foot two little blondie with an accent. Not happening. Okay, I'm not going stranger danger. Mm -mm. Number two, I can't back people for their business. I always had a chip on my shoulder thinking that they're lucky they get to work with me, even when I never sold a house, right? Um, then they would be farming. Well, for farming, I also did the research. I'm a huge nerd, numbers nerd, right? So I did the research that if you decide to do farming, A, it's expensive. B, you're going to have to do eight touches before your brand will register in their mind, which means you have to send out a thousand cards eight months in a row, right? At a minimum or however many cards you're sending out before Google's real estate will ever become a brand in their mind. So I'm thinking now we are talking if it's, I think at the time it was 32 cents a piece, a thousand times. What is that? I can't do the math right now. 320 bucks, um, yeah. 32.32 times a thousand. Yeah. 320 bucks. I didn't have 320 bucks back in the day. Right. I don't know well, why also you spend it. You spend it, but you're not going to see it. You're not going to replenish that money for a year with that strategy either. Exactly. Right? So exactly. So you have to money. Spend money over and over and over again before it even registers in the brain. Right. So I was like, Hey, I don't have 320 bucks and B there has to be a fastest way to marketing besides eight, eight months before I see results. Right. Um, then we went into buying Zillow leads. I remember at the time our top producing agent was spending $4,000 a month on Zillow leads. Mind you, 320 was too much for me. Okay. Right. Right. Let alone 4,000 for alone 4, 000, nine phone numbers. Right? 4,000 for me was like, I wanted to make 4,000, not spend 4,000. Right. And, yeah. and also I always had a chip on my shoulder. Um, again, not, not against Zillow. It's, it's really against anything that let me get this straight. I worked super duper hard to get my best friend or my cousin over here that I don't have in the U S right to sell this house with me. I go months and months and months. And finally I get the listing. Now I'm going to plug it into the MLS. Now someone at the MLS decided to just feed it to Zillow for freaking free, right? And then Zillow going to turn around and say, oh, guess what? On your one, two, three main street, I just got a lead and I'm going to sell it back to you. Your own lead 
back to you for 200 bucks for 200 dollars. back to you through a live idx for free i just had a problem with that if zillow was paying for the right to have my listing on their website i have no problem buying it back from them but since they're getting it for free i should get it free i'm the listing agent and it's anyway that's just my two cents on it of course nobody in the industry agrees with me zillow has to make money too um, anyway, well, I, I wouldn't say nobody point. agrees with you. I think that's a that's that's a valid point because at the same time, wh why would I? Again, they're they're getting a they're just having an IDX feed, right? So that yeah. they're I have an IDX exactly. feed on my website. You do yeah. too, but I'm not I'm not calling you to be like, hey, I have a lead that wants to buy your listing. That just doesn't make a lot of sense. But yeah. but so you were I smart enough that. to realize, yeah. No, no, I figured I'm like, yeah, whatever Zillow is doing, I can do that, right? So now right. we right. Can take our own KV core, plaster it all over social media, and capture your own leads. I never bought a Zillow lead. I'm very happy with that. I also never bought any other awesome. leads. This is not against Zillow. This is against learn to capture your own leads, right? Um, so pretty much I went through all of those things and figured out everything that I wasn't willing to do, everything I couldn't afford to do. And that left me with pretty much nothing but social media <laughs> than I could afford. So this kind of like easy. What year was it? What year was this? So 2011 when I got licensed, but I think I started Bogos Real Estate Facebook business page in 2012, I would think, sometime in 2012. Okay. Okay. So before any other, before a lot of the other real estate teams and agents started oh, doing gosh, social media. Was, like, was even a thing. And you probably want to say like you were the, you were the pioneer and you knew it, you could see the future, but you were probably just doing whatever you could without spending money and Facebook was free. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you're like, I can, and I know that I can talk on camera or take pictures and do that stuff and tell it. I mean, I would, like, right? I would love to say that I was so smart and I was ahead of <laughs> right? Um, but no, really not. That was the only thing that I could afford. And I was kind of a, you had a phone. Yeah, exactly. I had a phone. Yeah. I had a book. I knew how to type and take a video and post it, right? Uh, and cross my right. fingers that somebody's going to watch it and reach out to me. Um, they did use so, to make me back in the day. And then over time, it, I became the expert at it because I was doing it for the longest. Because when you became, yeah, you just did it a lot, right? You do anything over and over again, you do become an expert at it. Um, so then, so you took that mold and you said, I can, I can create training based around that to to replicate it so you you too don't need to buy zillow leads you don't need to door knock you don't need to send postcards so what your training program does anybody who joins team gogo -Go gets full access to it right yes yeah so it was also for sale for the longest time to the public so that's how it all started when i came over to exp gogo's realist uh gogo's bootcamp social media was for sale for the public right and then when we got to exp when it comes to social media, it requires a lot of updating. Facebook changes that algorithms like daily. Then there's TikTok, right. and then there's YouTube, and now there's Shorts, and there's Reels, and there's. I was like, oh my gosh, hold on a minute, everybody, right? <laughs> like this is a full time job, just creating the updates content for the course. So I was like, I can't. Like today, I run eight companies. I can't create another reel about how to create a reel. Like there's YouTube for that, right? So what we decided to do is to shut that down. Everybody who purchased that, like the basics and the fun fundamentals of social media marketing and brand building, of course, is a part of the course. But since I cannot upkeep, um, with how fast the systems are changing, you are no longer selling that. But anybody who purchased it in the past automatically has lifetime access to that. My people, my Team GoGo -Go agents, the agents that join EXP through me or through someone in the Team GoGo -Go organization, they also get access to that. But then when I joined EXP, I said, I'm going to bring 100 agents, right? And my sponsor said, sure you will. Because nobody did at the time, right? Nobody bought right. 100 agents. So my, my sponsor says, when you do that, I'll buy you a Rolex. And I was like, Okay. Again, I told Challenge you. Accepted. Like, Challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah. If you're and gonna, if so, you're gonna give me a, yeah, I'll, I got you. <laughs> I have a Rolex that my sponsor bought for me. I don't have it on because it's upstairs, but yes. That's and uh, so pretty much what happened is I did achieve that goal. I, I now personally have brought over 240 agents in my front line. So between my husband and my myself. And then I started having the same questions as how do you do this? Why do you do that? Can you show me this? Can you explain me that? Instead of explaining the same thing over and over again, I turned my knowledge into uh, a video based training, which we call now Agent Google's Weekend Agent Attraction. And uh, that one is for sale. We are revamping the whole thing. It's going to be five modules um, released monthly because it's so much knowledge. Let me give it to right. all at once. We are breaking it into monthly knowledge. Um, and that's. Uh, the website is under construction. Hopefully it's up within a month when everything is redone. And then what, can... let me ask you this for people who are wanting to at least team leaders or something, what, what platform do you use to host all those videos and go through the training? 
So it's like, it's a mixture between Kajabi and ClickFunnels. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you have somebody else build that out for you though, right now? Yeah. So I, I mean, it's a mixture. I have an out, outdoor, outdoors. I have an outside <laughs> marketing company and then I have inside team that also kind of work together. So some parts of it we do in house, some parts of it we hire out. Okay. I'm going to jump. I'm gonna, I have a question because yesterday well, I, was, I started a long, long, long question, like your question yeah. in a long, long, roundabout way. My courses are for sale for the public, but everybody that joins the team Google organization through me or anybody in the team Google organization, they get it for free. Okay, perfect. No, I wanted everybody to know that too, because maybe yeah. I'll buy it. I don't know. I'll, I'll take a look at it. <laughs> I want to see what you're doing. I want 64,000. I'm on my way. Right. Um, so I looked at your story yesterday. So I started, you know, I knew this interview was coming up. So I was like, let me just follow up for a little bit and really dive into what she's doing. And you posted a picture. I have it right here. And it says uh, it's uh, episode step seven, but then you said, so you will meet my, and you have, these are the people house assistant, life assistant, executive assistant, design assistant, social media assistant, tech numbers assistant, agent onboarding assistant, TV show assistant, real estate assistant, boot camp support assistant, and your chef. So like, that's the dream. Um, and I know you posted that not to, it wasn't to like show anything off. I think you, it's coming from a place, just this little time I've talked to you, it's coming from a place of like, I earned that and I worked my ass off to get those things to build that leverage off. So can you kind of go through the journey of like, first of all, how do you have that many assistants? How did you, where'd you find them? How do you train them? <laughs> like, what does that look like? Cause to me, I see that I'm like, I would love all of those people. I don't even know where to start. So how do you start? Where'd you, yeah. You can't compare yourself to like, there isn't such a thing as overnight success, right? So usually when you see someone out there like, oh my gosh, it seems so hard. It didn't happen overnight, right? So if we are starting on the real estate side of things, right? So let's talk, let's assume that we are talking to an average agent doing transactions, right? That's what they have going on. What I will start with very, very first is a transaction coordinator. Because paper pushing, it is not your time best spent, right? So number one, let's back it up a second because you have to understand the mindset to understand why I would be spending tens of thousands of dollars because if, by spending tens of thousands every month, it allows me to make hundreds of thousands every month, right? Correct. So number one, you need to figure out how you are making your money, what you are doing that makes you the most amount of money. That's number one. So if you're a realtor, you have to look at what I want you to do is look at how much money you made last year overall, like all of, all of your commissions, right? And then take that and divide it by 2080. If you work a healthy 40 hours, which none of us do, but let's assume that you do, it's 2080 hours in a year, right? So divide that, it's going to give you an hourly rate. Now that you have your hourly rate, if it's a couple hundred dollars or thousands of dollars, depending on how many transactions you do, right? Now you want to look at it, how much of that time you spent on the listing side and how much of that time you spent on the buy side. Usually, the idea is that you start out and most agents start out on the buy side and eventually work themselves up to listing side, right? So now what you want to do is see, are you mostly on the listing side? If you are, now it's time for you to get yourself a buyer's agent. Each of your listings should get you two buyers. Okay. One going to buy that house, another is going to buy a house in the same price range, same vicinity, right? right? So now you removed right. all of the buy side transactions from your plate. Now you're going to be listing heavy. Not only that you're listing heavy, now each of your listings is going to bring you two buyers. You just doubled all of your commissions, right? Now doubling it, but you're splitting it at a 50%, so it's really one more time. Make sense? Because yep. if you split into transactions at a 50-50, it's not two transactions, it becomes one transaction, but for each listing, you'll get one buyer, full commission, right. that you didn't work for, right? So number one is transaction coordinator, no more paper pushing ever again, um, because every hour, like think of it, how many hours do you spend on the listing side or buy side? You'll probably spend an average of seven hours on the listing side if you're really good at it and your systems, right? Like you go, you do the initial phone call, go out to the listing appointment, go out to the photo shoot, negotiate market, show up at the final walk and go to the closing. Probably seven hours if you're really efficient, right? On the buy right, side, right. it's way more now with the multiple, back to multiple biddings again, yada, yada, probably 15 hours, right? So mm -hmm. how much time, most of the time, buy side commission is less, listing side commission is more, plus you spend less time here, you spend more time here, so your hourly rate is very off on the two sides. You have to get rid of buy sides, right? So now that you got a transaction coordinator, you got rid of your buyers, now the next thing is, okay, how many transactions can you possibly do, right? So when I got to 42 transactions, personally, my head was spinning. And I didn't get yeah. into real estate to not ever spend time with my kids. I was so proud that I was at their soccer game. Yes, I was, but I was doing this the whole time. 
I was doing this the whole time. Right. I have no idea if you won or lost at the end of the game. And that is not the type of man that I wanted to be, right? So then I said, okay, now I need to figure out how can I do, how can I not do more transactions but make more money? So now I had to get myself a listing specialist, right? So now I got myself a listing specialist. In the meantime, you have to get an assistant because while you have all of this going on, there's the emails, there's the back and forth of the appointments that you can't make or you don't know if you can make it, then you get to start asked to go speak at events, you get to start asked to show up to podcasts and things like that, that now are going to take time away from you. A, so you can't do the listing size, so now you've got your listing specialist, but B, it's going to have to be scheduled and you don't have time for that. You're lucky if you have enough time to show up, right? So now you're going to get right. an executive assistant. Now your executive assistant where do you, is going to Where do you find that person? Like, What's a good place for you to find that person? So I started out, now mind you, this is back in the day before virtual assistant was a thing. Okay. okay. So my executive assistant, who's Christy, who's now my director of operations, she's been with me since 2014, right? Like she has grown with me and we have built all of these companies together, but she did start out as my executive assistant slash transaction coordinator initially. And she was in person okay. and I don't know what someone in your area would charge you, but I'm thinking probably somewhere between 20 to 25 bucks an hour. If you're using someone local to you to do these kind of right. things, but because transaction coordinators nowadays also back in the day, we didn't have transaction coordinating companies. Okay. Right. Like this right. is back in the day when I used to fax offers, this is how old I've been in the industry. Right. <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend to get an assistant um, for doing TC work because the TC work through an ex actual transaction coordination company, it is much cheaper and they don't get paid if the transaction doesn't close. If so, when you hire a TC company, you pay you $400 on the listing side. If that listing falls apart for whatever reason, you don't get paid, they don't get paid. If you have an executive assistant, you're paying 20 to 25 bucks an hour, you're paying that person no matter if that transaction closes or not. So I wouldn't recommend right. getting a, an assistant for that. Hire out a TC company. That's your best bet. So your executive assistant answers, does she, does she answer your emails? She makes your schedules. She does like, she just kind of communicates with non-negotiation situations, right? I um, haven't checked a DM. I haven't checked LinkedIn and I couldn't tell you when. And this is how it dawned on me. I logged in one day to LinkedIn and I had 960 messages. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? I spent like four <laughs> hours going through. I'm so excited to be in, in touch. Oh my gosh, I'm here in the same business. Oh my God. Da, da, da. I'm like, seriously, I had four messages that I truly needed to address. I had to right. go to 960 of them to figure out they were sports. So I'm like, this is ridiculous. Somebody else needs to be doing this. So on my DM, okay. This is complicated. This is a, it's, I told you I know, it's that's not why I'm like, go hiring right. the next. I'm trying thing, to get right? as much so, as I can out of, the, of a tiny time period so that we have. Together. I want you to do what's called the red light, green light exercise. You take a piece of paper, right? And you're going to draw a line in the middle. You're going to put red light on one side, green light on the other. Red light okay. means stop doing it right now because somebody else can do it. Green light means sorry, you're it. Okay. You're going to take okay. that piece of book with you everywhere you go for the next week. Every step that you take, every phone call you make, every email you answer, every DM you answer, every photo you take, every post you make, every yard sign you take out, every closing you show up to, the closing kits you buy, whatever that you do, everything's going to be in the red light or green light section. Red light means you can stop doing it, like buying closing gifts. Does it have to be bought? Yes. Can your assistant buy it online and ship it to your office? Absolutely. Right. So red light means stop doing it right now. It's not making you money. Somebody else needs to do it. So in the end of the week, when you did that exercise, in the end of the week, you have your red light section. Your red light section is your new assistant's job. You're going to have two sections in that red light. You're going to have in person, like, for example, taking out a yard sign, your VA from Brazil can do that. You're going to have to hire someone in person for that. But you can hire another mom who drops off their kid at 930 and they can work for you until 1230 every single day. Right. They come right. to your office, they work for you three hours, whatever they can get in those three hours. And then you have an assistant virtually who does it online, everything else. Virtual assistants will cost you about 700 bucks a month full time. Green light section is what you will have to do for the rest of your life. Now, that green light section will change the more you are changing your job and the more help you have. Right. Eventually, now I only post on Instagram and my social media assistant takes it and posts it on every other website. So have you done this multiple times in the last 10 years of, cause again, with all of the, okay. all that help you just did. So you, I feel like the way you just did it, you've, you've hired out but eight or nine people, but it's different. They're so specialized that it's, I'm, were you doing that in real time? Like, okay, now I'm doing too much of social media. Let me see what I can do and what I can't do. Exactly. Okay. I'm doing, yeah. I'm doing so too much with like onboarding. For that specific job. So you're like, I just spent an hour and a half I'm responding to DMs. This is ridiculous. 
right? right. So now or, say, oh, or building oh, out a training system, right? Or like like placing videos where they need to go. Like you don't need to do that, correct? No, nothing, nothing. So then, okay, so let's go through. We have a house assistant today. Her name is Cassandra. And she is the one who's physically with me. Now, mind you, while we lived in Michigan, Christy was physically with me, but we moved to Florida. Christy mm -hmm. stayed in Michigan. So she's my director of operations. Now I have her down here and Cassandra pretty much. I mean, it's ridiculous the type of things that she does for me. But if you want to do things right, and if you work with like the way I work, I don't have time to even think about food. So Cassandra's job is to bring me a fresh cup of water and every hour check to make sure I drink it. Her job is to bring me my vitamins every single morning and an hour later make sure that I took it. At one o'clock, she brings me food, right? And in between, she right. knows if my door is closed, she has access to my calendar. So she knows when and when, when she cannot come in. She knows every Tuesday at 11, I have a podcast, so she doesn't come in, right? Other than that, she'll check my calendar before she knock on my door to know if I'm live or just in a meeting where, where I can actually talk to her, right? So I need to have physical help here too, because I am, if you look at my calendar, Mark, I am back to 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 back. So somebody has to make sure that I eat today. Right. Because I'm sure a lot of people are listening to this, including myself, is like, I, because I have something at, you know, at 1230 that I have to be at. Right. So then I'm like, I have 30 minutes to eat. And I put that in my calendar because otherwise I won't do it. Exactly. <laughs> and it's unhealthy. So, so exactly. was, the, was, was this system that you've created even for her, did you teach it to her or did you just say, this is what I, you figure it out. Like who built that out? It's kind of a you mixture. I mean? right? So my um, house assistant, if you think about it, when you kind of live, I mean, we don't live with her. She comes to our house every morning and leaves in the end of the day. Right. But it's kind of like living with someone for eight hours of the day. Right. So when she's yeah. here, she kind of has to figure out what's expected, but also the, how we kind of live our life. So make sure that she fits in. Right. And she also grocery shops for us. So I'm huge on, eating healthy because if you don't eat healthy today, you're going to spend, you can spend it now on organic and clean eating, or you can spend it later on medication and doctors, right? That's how I look at it. So like I look at, I'm, I'm huge on organic. I don't do soy. Like I just found an oil in my house. That's soy oil. I'm like, who bought this? Like I want to feed my dog. Right. So, um, these kind of things. So it takes time for the small part to come to all come together. Right. But you keep nipping it so set in the butt. Like when you see something, like I took a picture of that, I'm saying, don't you ever buy a soy roll? Like not in my house. Like you right. can take it to whoever I want organic, I want cold press. You have two options, sunflower or olive oil. So it right? seems like you, you're really good at setting those expectations for the people that you hire to say, like, this is the, these are the expectations, these are the standards, this is what I'm expecting you to do and be self-sufficient with making to enhance this this situation, whether it's YouTube direct, uh, you have so, so many, I can't even remember, but I add, <laughs> yeah. I want to add on to that because I disc assess everyone. That's another huge portion of my hiring okay. process. So disc assessments, in my opinion, is very, very important because people will get comfortable over time and their true colors will come out. In the interviewing process, they will tell you what you want to hear because you have a job description for the public, right? And says, I want right. you to do this, this, and this, and I want you to have experience with this, this, and this. And they're gonna be like, of course I have experience. I've done that, bro, I'm perfect for the job, right? Not only that, but then their personality comes out. So I'm a high DNI, very low SNC, meaning I'm very driven, very in your face, very direct. Like if I hire somebody that is a very low D, they're gonna cry about every day working with me. That's not gonna work, right? right? Because I don't right. sugarcoat, I just tell you how I feel, not because I wanna hurt your feelings, is because that's a thought of my mind, right? And a yep. person won't be able to take that. Now, if I hire a very high D, you're going to butt heads, right? Because they're going to want to be me right. over time. Naturally, he's like, you're not telling me what to do, right? So desk assessments are very important to see people's true colors because over time, they're going to start acting in their natural. So I look at desk assessment for that specific job all the time. But also, Got it's it. very important, in my opinion, for people to be able to think ahead not just take orders and get it done, but also to think ahead, right? So it is very important to read the people and discuss them. And if you don't know what a disc assessment is, number one, take one. And number two, 
have um, watched some YouTube videos on how to read them and what you know what each of the sections on the disk assessment mean. Yeah, that's probably imp extremely important to know where you sit, right? Where you are, what you said, oh, high yeah. D and high I, and then what matches with that, right? And for the different roles. See, and that's what a lot of people don't, everybody sees people hire things and hire people and they just assume they just did interviewed and everybody's good in an interview for the most part. But to have that long-term relationship because these people, the, the, your, your, the people are committed to you and they're loyal to you, it seems like. So that's, that's something probably the way that you have the relationship with them, but also seeing the future and seeing how they're going to pan out. Right. With the if you hire, right. You don't have to fire. Yeah. Right. And yeah, exactly. Overly um, and people getting used to you and all that. I'm also very, I give huge freedom to all of my employees to pretty much do whatever they want, whenever they want. I don't care as long as it's done. I don't care if you got it done on the beach, if you're in a club, I don't care if it's 2 a.m. Sure. in the afternoon, as long as it's done, I don't care. So I give huge freedom and I only really get snippy with them if it's not done or not done right. Now, let me ask you this, all, all the employees, that, how many employees do you have uh, that are working for you right now? Total, do you have a ballpark? 20 some, let's say 24, 24, 25. I okay, think. are they 1099 or are they W2? So I only have one, two, three W2s, including myself okay. and everybody else is 1099. But all okay. my employees are overseas. Got it. So they're all help. Like all the, the, let me pull it up again. So actually to Design, answer your question, I don't, even have to, I don't even have to 1099 them because you're outside of the country. You're just paying. Right. Exactly. So that's the key right there. Right. And they're very efficient. And you, again, you interview them and you do the whole thing. Same process, right? Yes. That's amazing. Um, well, we're gonna, we need to wrap. Uh, unfortunately, we need to wrap up soon, which is I could you know, obviously. Okay, I'm sure let's go through some soon. of the some of the help very quick and what they do for me, and uh, hopefully that helps somebody out there. So, number one, figure out what your hour is worth, and don't ever do an activity that is not not making you that money in that hour. So, I look at everything that I do. If I don't make that money in that hour, that's my hourly rate is that's getting hired out right now. Right. Okay. So the next thing is all of your in-house help. That's number one. After you got your TC, you got your buyer's agent, your listing agent, your administrative assistant, your executive assistant. Then you're going to help an in-person assistant. Right. That's going to help you with everything. I don't I couldn't tell you the last time I run a load of laundry. I don't know when I grocery shop, like all of that is taken care of. Then I hire the chef. The reason why is because when I'm done, I finally want peace and quiet. I want a clean house and I want a food on the table and not have to think about running to the grocery store. Do I have time to eat? Like I'll sit down with a nice glass of wine, enjoy a very nice dinner. And if you look at it, when we, we have our chef come every Monday, she makes a meal for Monday and Tuesday, every Thursday a meal for, or Wednesday, she makes a meal for Wednesday and Thursday. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we cook or we go eat out, right? Um, when the groceries are bought and you know it's clean and it's organic and when it's made in your home, right? So you can control that. I feel much better knowing that we eat clean. And I also have some time to actually spend with my time, with my family. And then nice. on the business side of things, I have an executive assistant. Her name is Lindsay. And then I saw a quote that, you know, you made it when your assistant has an assistant. So Lindsay's assistant is Caroline. <laughs> Uh, because we grew to the point where Lindsay couldn't assist me anymore for like it's more than a full time job with all the different companies and things that I do. Right. Uh, we have a social media assistant. So her job is to answer all the DMs, comments. The only place that you get me personally is Instagram. Everywhere else, I have a virtual assistant, all of the DMs, all of the emails. Um, in each of my companies, I have an email address. Those emails have to be answered, right? Just not by me, right? Um, then we have um, the, so the social, after that, we have the design assistant. So all of the flyers, the events, the website, the things that have to be designed, um, we have a design assistant for that. So her job is like even uh, presentations, when I need a presentation, she designs those presentations, all those bullet points, everything. Um, then who else is on that list? Am I forgetting? I mean, there's multiple. The boot camps. So each of my companies, Agent. the Google Software TV show has yeah, an onboarding. assistant. The boot camp has an assistant and an, on, and a, an operations manager. We have an onboarding. Um, so we onboard, as I said, you know, about 60 agents a month. Um, so we have an in-house onboarding and he's also my numbers guy. So Said is actually my oldest virtual assistant. He started out as, as our numbers guy, but he also became our onboarding specialist. So he onboards all of our agents. He does all of the spreadsheets, like my team Google ref share trackers. Like I track everything. I track transactions, you name it, uh, team production, all of that. And he does all of our numbers as well. And With all these VAs, do you use a company to do it or do you go straight to, yeah, how do you find them? Yeah, so I am the founder of WeClone I no longer own WeClone so I'm no longer uh, a part of the company, but I was okay. the founder of WeClone with Sammy. So if you guys would like, you can use my discounted code. So if you go to weclone.com forward slash go go, you get your free 
you get your first VA on me. So it's a thousand dollar discount. What? It's called, what is the, what, it's a website? What's it called? We clone you. Dot, we clone you. We clone you. Forward okay. slash go. So you have to use the forward slash go go link for the thousand dollars off. That's amazing. Okay. Well, there's a little secret right there. All right. Before we wrap up, you said that you had top 10 tips for agent attraction or top 10 tips for production in 2023 entrepreneur mindset. Can you give just a few tips on each one? You don't have to do the top 10, but just tips on agent attraction for 2023 and tips for production in 2023. Okay. So top 10 for agent attraction. Don't be a secret agent, meaning your profile has to reflect that you're an agent. And I don't want to see that you're a yogi and a foodie and you have a cat, like none of that. It's like, if you have to take business seriously in order for people to take your business seriously, right? Um, number two, don't sell your brokerage, sell your successes. Brokerages people don't care about, you need to create FOMO, you need to show them the good life to show, to, for them to see what they are missing, right? So then in order, they would want what you have, which comes in secondhandedly from the brokerage that you are with. Uh, what gets celebrated gets duplicated. You have to celebrate your agents. You have to celebrate. You, um, so we celebrate our agents' production. We celebrate their agent attraction successes if they are doing the agent attraction and growing the team. We celebrate our agents' birthdays when they icon, when they're top producer, top agent attractor. We send gifts. So as soon as an agent joins Team Gogo, they get our branded Team Gogo notebook with our branded pen. So all of all of these things, like you have to build a brand, but in the same time while you're doing that, people have to feel like they belong to a community and you have to celebrate your agents. Now, Number four, tool, tools for attraction. So have your own website, have systems like CRM Glow where you can track. CRM Glow is like Big Brother. So the videos that are on my website, they have a tracker on them. So I see who's watching them and also how long they watched it. Um, uh, why I switched EXP. So you have to have a video that tells the world why you made the switch to the brokerage that you are with. Um, you have to have a Facebook group for your team or downline and calendar links. So when people say, hey, go, I want to talk to you about EXP. You have to be able to send them that link so they can jump into your calendar. Number five, how to attract. So we do Let's Talk EXP calls. Every single um, time somebody wants to talk to me, I have a page. So it's gogobatki.com forward slash partner. They can go to that page, watch all the videos, everything, what it's like to partner with me, what it's like to be at EXP. And then they jump into my calendar, which is called the Let's Talk EXP call, which is through Calendly. And then three-way calls. When my agents are finally agent attracting and they're ready to build their teams or downline, I do the presentations for them. So they have an initial conversation with the agent that they are wanting to bring over to, to EXP. And then um, they set up a meeting that we call a three-way call. So they bring their guests, myself, and I do most of the presentation. They sign them up when the agent is ready. And then we also do what's called the Why Not EXP. That is a weekly presentation. Every Wednesday and Thursday night at 8 o'clock, we do a presentation about, we call it Why Not EXP. So it's like play on words, but we pretty much present EXP and it's open to the public. Anybody can come whenever they're ready to listen about the opportunity. And hopefully they decide after the call to join us. Next one is net, uh, number six is network. So break bread, uh, meaning that never eat alone. You're going to eat lunch or breakfast this, every single day, right? Invite another agent to talk to, co coffee or lunch or dinner, whatever you can afford. Go to events. The best places to form a relationship is when you're physically in the same space with them. So go to events. And then when you go to events, bring a guest, especially if they're EXP events, right? Uh, join real estate Facebook groups. And they, not allow, not, they are not going to allow you to recruit in those groups, right? But that you can form relationships and then form those, have those conversations outside of the Facebook group. Um, give before you take. Uh, that's why I give so much knowledge on any of my platforms so that I can give, 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 give. So eventually when people receive, they feel like they owe you, so they will come back to you. Number seven, you must know their numbers. You must know the brokerage and they also set the competition's numbers. So you need to know their models so you can beat them. Um, and then uh, know your brokerage, your own brokerage systems and processes and numbers and everything that they offer, right? Number eight, trackers. Uh, I track everything as I like to say my trackers have trackers. So we have a greatness tracker, which tracks your habits. Um, I have a revenue share tracker and then I have a well chart. Um, all of this you can find on googlebeck.com for free. And then videos, um, you have to be in the videos. You have to allow people to get to know you because people don't join brokerages, they join people. So they have to get to know you, get comfortable on videos. People tell me all the time, go, go, I don't feel comfortable. It's really hard to be on video. It's much harder to be broke. So you decide. And number 10, begin with the end in mind. So if you can't even imagine, if you don't have your end goal and what you want to achieve by December 31st of 2023, you can't possibly have it. And if you can't see it, that means you need to force your brain to see it which means you have to close your eyes and meditate until you're able to see that, right? So this, these are my 10 tips on agent interaction. That's you amazing. Want to try, 
my attention. So no, let's okay. leave that. Let's keep it. Let's keep that there because I also want people to go to you and reach out and be able to, you know, and especially if they're not with the XP or if they are with the XP, I just want like you're, you've built such a cool thing and just listening to you, you've, I know you're, you're super competitive and you have this chip on your shoulder, but I'll be honest, like just, I, I've, I've, we've all watched you from afar because you're so good at being on social media, but it, you really have a genuine passion for helping other people. And I can tell just in the last 45 minutes we've been talking that that's where this is coming from. You have these systems and all this stuff too, but you would rather eat lunch with somebody that you could help than eat lunch alone, regardless oh, if they're going to, regardless if they're going to come and join in your downline or join your team or whatever that is. I, I genuinely believe that. And that's why you've had so much success and that's why you're still rolling so fast. Um, so ma massive congratulations to you. I'm so happy that I got to hear you. Hopefully other people got a lot of kind of like value Thank from you. this podcast as well. And anytime I anytime you need me to do anything, I, I you know, of course I'll be there. But real quick, where I, you've said it a bunch of times, but where can people reach you? Where can you find you promote whatever you can in the next minute or two and then we'll wrap this thing. Yeah, up. so you can find me under Google's Real Estate, Google Bathy or Google Preneur almost anywhere. Okay. And you're still growing Team GoGo. -Go, so if people are wanting to jump on board, they'll get all your cool stuff, right? Yeah. They would absolutely love to have you. Okay. GoGo, -Go, thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. And until the next time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Bye, everyone. Hey, thanks for listening to my interview with Gogo Bethke. She is an amazing person. She it's it's fascinating seeing where she came from and where she is now. I she's constantly on my Instagram feed, my Facebook feed, my YouTube feed. Um, she's brilliant. Uh, we talked a little offline just how how amazing she's created uh, a perfect life for herself. I mean, I'm sure it's not perfect, but still, she's a very happy person and very giving as well. She just gives knowledge all the time. So make sure you reach out to her if you have any questions. She's really cool. Um, and also make sure you subscribe to this podcast so that you get notifications every time we drop a new episode. And it'd be really cool if you gave us a five-star review because that way our podcast will reach more people just like yourself. And it'd be really fun to bring them along on this journey. Hey, thanks for listening. See you on the next one. Thank you.